All right, guys and gals, Metallus here for Cessadet. What we're going to be working on today is a little bit of theory craft on a Magic the Gathering deck I would like to call Holy Heck. Now, what this deck is, is essentially an angel deck that I've put together just kind of winging it. And I've been doing really well with it. I've made a few people forfeit in PvP, so that's always a bonus. I've also gotten to gold rank this season with it. and Well, with this and a uh, elf deck that I've been running. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to take this into some matches and show you how it runs, but I'm going to walk you down through each card and tell you what it does. So the Youthful Valkyrie is an early game uh, sleeper cell, and what it does is it essentially gets bigger the more angels you play while it's on the field. So if they leave it alone for too long, it creeps up on them and bites them in the butt. Heartless Act, destroy target creature with no counters on it, which is fantastic, especially for decks that don't run counters on them at all. Or you can remove up to three counters from a target creature. So if they have a counter on them of any format, whether it be Death Touch, Life Link, what, plus one, plus one, whatever. You can remove up to three different counters from it. Heliod, Sun Crowned. Now the reason this deck is called Holy Heck is because it's got nothing but gods, angels, and clerics in it. Heliod, Sun Crowned, can give your creatures lifelink for one white plus a colorless. It's also an indestructible enchantment, so it's not like it's going to leave unless they exile it. So as long as your devotion to white is less than five, Heliod isn't a creature. But as soon as you get five white mana drop on the field where you can count the mana costs, one white plus two colorless, once you get up to five white mana costs on the field, he becomes a creature. And anytime you gain life, you can put a plus one plus one counter on a creature or enchantment you control. The enchantment thing is because of an outdated mechanic where you had enchantment creatures that were only creatures if they had specific stuff like the god for or the god itself heliod for instance then there's raydane god of the worthy and valkmira protector's shield and what this does is i usually play the creature side because the creature side has flying and vigilance and makes your opponent's spells that are non-creature spells like instants and sorceries that target you or your creatures. All of them cost two extra to play if they cost four or more converted. Now, it also makes your snow lands that opponents control enter tapped. So that's pretty good against snow-based decks, but it's really negligible in most situations and scenarios. Now, the other side of it, you can choose to play Raydina or Raydane or Valkmira. You can't play both. Whenever you're playing the card you choose depending on which what the mana cost is as to what you want to play. So Valkmira makes it to where any time that a source would deal damage to a permanent you control or you it prevents one of that damage. So if they only have one ones on the field it, they deal no damage. It's fantastic. And then whenever you or another permanent you control becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, counter that spell or ability unless its controller pays one extra mana of any color. So that's going to be really fantastic for scenarios in which they don't have enough mana to actually do much. Righteous Valkyrie, this is one of the heavy hitters in the deck, specifically because it's just got so much life gain potential. It's a 3-drop, 2-4 with flying, and every time that an angel enters the battlefield under your control, you gain life equal to the creature's toughness, which is the secondary uh, number on the right-hand side down at the bottom, for those who haven't played Magic before. And as long as your life total is seven or more than your starting life total, creatures you control get plus two, plus two, and this is not a legendary creature. So you can have multiples of this on the field. Whereas these two are legendary, so you can only have one on the field at a time. Now you can have one Ray Dane and one Valkmira on the field at the same time, but not the same name. So yeah, this is a pretty good heavy hitter. And then this little thing, this cleric here, makes your angel spells cost two colorless less to cast. So for instance, that makes the Youthful Valkyrie cost one mana. It makes Righteous Valkyrie cost one mana. It's just really insane for what it does. Uh, Vengeful Reaper. This card has saved my butt so many times just because it sits there and just stares them down. Uh, all you have to do is leave it untapped which means don't attack with it or anything. It's got flying, death, touch, and haste, so if anything attacks you, you can block with it. 
and as soon as you block with it, their creature dies, unless it's got indestructible. You can also foretell this for two mana, one black, one colorless, which means you can pay two colorless mana, which is mana of any color, really, um, to flip it upside down and put it out off to the side somewhere in the exiled zone where nobody can see it but you. And then whenever you can afford to, you can put it, put it back on the field for its foretell cost, which is two. So that's basically a third turn, two, three with flying death, touch, and haste. It's really good. I have no idea why it's not a rare. Then we have Eradicator Valkyrie here. It's a flying lifelink, and it's got hexproof from Planeswalkers, which means that Planeswalkers can't use effects on it, um, which makes it really good for those strange scenarios in which a Planeswalker can just up and kill your creatures. They can't kill this one with it. Um, the boast effect, if you pay one black mana and one colorless mana whenever you're attacking and sacrifice another creature that you control, each opponent sacrifices a creature or a Planeswalker. So whenever you attack, you can make them sacrifice their only blocker if they only have one. Or you can just make them sacrifice whatever, because why not, right? The Flying and Lifelink is really nice on this card, uh, specifically because the Lifelink is needed to proc your Righteous Valkyries effect to get extra damage out of your creatures. Hagra Mauling, I've been running this specifically because it can be either a land or a destroy spell. And if they don't have any basic lands, it costs one colorless less, so you can play it for three instead of four. I typically just pay the four cost on it most of the time anyway, because people get a basic land by the time that I actually get to play it. Um, but it's a really good spell. It's basically a heartless act, except for it has no special requirement. Like it doesn't have to have counters or no counters on it for you to kill their creature. And then there's Ferja's Retribution. Sagas enter the battlefield, or, and after your draw step, you add a lore counter. Each lore counter on it gets a different effect for it. So as soon as you play it, you get a 4-4 white angel warrior creature token with flying and vigilance. And then the next turn, until end of turn, angels you control gain, whenever you tap it, you can destroy target creature with a lower power than your angels. So most angels have 2-4 to four power. So anything that has less than four power, you can just tap your creature and destroy it. It doesn't matter if they want to block with it or not, it's just dead. And then the third effect, which is the third turn after you play it, which hopefully you have some good angels lined up at this point. Angels you control gain double strike until end of turn, which means they deal double the damage. They deal first strike damage and then regular damage. So that's going to be a game ender in some situations. Then we're going to look at Cleaving Reaper. It's a five drop but whenever you take into consideration that typically you'll have a Starnheim Aspirant on the field first, this little guy, it'll only be a three drop, two black, one colorless, with one of those on the field. Multiples of those do add up and stack to where your creatures don't cost anything except for the required mana cost, no colorless. So what this is is a Flying and Trample 5-3, and you can pay three life anytime you play an Angel or Berserker card to make it re-enter the battlefield under your control or whenever they enter the battlefield under your control, you can bring it back to your hand, my bad. So what I use this for is a bruiser, specifically to remove some big stuff on their side of the field. I'll block with it sometimes, sometimes I'll attack with it just to put pressure on them. And then whenever I need it later, I can play an angel from anywhere. It doesn't matter where, as long as an angel enters the battlefield, I can get it back for three life, which is fantastic. Then there's Turgrid, God of Fright. Now this will come in contact with another effect that we'll be dealing with later that'll actually make it synergize very well. Now it's a 5 cost, 4 or 5 with Menace. And whenever an opponent sacrifices a creature that's a non-token creature, or permanent, or discards a permanent card, you may take it from their graveyard and put it under your control on the battlefield. So if they ever sacrifice anything, anything at all for any reason, it goes to your side of the field. So you can build up a really good army with it in the event that you actually manage to make them sacrifice anything. Uh, the other side of it is a four drop, one black, three colorless. So you can choose either or, like I said earlier. You tap it to make target player lose three life unless they sacrifice a non-land permanent or discard a card. Why that's awesome is it guarantees that they're either discarding a card, sacrificing something that they don't want to sacrifice, or losing three life. You can tap it multiple times in a turn if you have enough mana because whenever you pay one black mana and three colorless mana you can untap it 
and then tap it again to get the effect off again. Now where we're going to move into the synergy off of that last card is here with Rampage of the Valkyries. When Rampage of the Valkyries enters the battlefield, you create a 4-4 Angel token, which is awesome. It has Flying and Vigilance, which is extremely awesome. The old Angel tokens that they used to produce, I don't believe had Vigilance. I think they only had Flying. So having tokens that have Vigilance is amazing. And whenever an angel you control dies, each other player sacrifices a creature, which that's where the synergy comes into play with Turgrid. Anytime that they sacrifice a creature with Turgrid on the field, you get control of that creature. So you can build up a really good army just because you're blocking with angels. So just keep that in mind. I have two Amiria's calls in here specifically for angel production. And also it can turn your... Starnheim Aspirants, invulnerable to damage, which means indestructible. So they can't die as long as you've played this for your turn. And you get two angels out of it, so why not, right? On the flip side of it, if you need mana in a hurry, you can pay three life and throw down this mana, which will give you one white mana per copy of this that you play. You can only play one mana per turn, of course, but if you're watching this video, I, I hope you understand the basics of magic enough to know that. But it's pretty good in a pinch to get a mana if you need it, and you can also hold on to it if it's late game and start playing some angels. And for our mana base, I've got five planes, nothing special, five swamps, nothing special, uh, four copies of Great Hall of Starnheim, which this comes into play tapped and it counts as a black mana if you tap it for mana. But if you pay two white and a black and then sacrifice it and a creature you control, you get a 4-4 four, four white angel token with flying and vigilance. And it's an Angel Warrior token, so you got to be specific there. Angel Warrior token. You can activate this ability only any time you can cast a sorcery, so you can only activate it on your turn. But where I use that is, I will have a token on the field from playing Furge's Retribution or Rampage of the Valkyries. And then I will sacrifice the token specifically to make a new token with Rampage of the Valkyries on the field. And then my opponent has to sacrifice a creature, which is a really good synergy. It's just been making people forfeit. It's pretty awesome. Back onto our mana base, we've got Temples of Silence, which allow you to scry one. I've only got two of them in there because you don't really need more than that. I've got three Fabled Passages specifically to pull mana that you need whenever you need it, just in case, um, out of your mana base of Plains and Swamps. And then I've got a Tyrite Sanctum, which I've only got two legendary creatures in the deck. One of them is already indestructible. This basically comes into play only if I get Raydane, God of the Worthy, on the field. And then I can pay for, sacrifice it, and make her indestructible for the rest of the game. Or I can pay two and keep pumping plus one, plus one counters on her or Heliod and just run rampant on somebody. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop in a game and see how we can play against people with it. And you'll see why I call it holy heck if we get a good matchup. Now, there are scenarios in which you just lose. Um, those scenarios are basically if you don't have three or more mana in hand, which I have basically four because I can use uh, Hagra Mauling for a mana in a pinch. So we're going to go ahead and keep this because it looks like a really good hand. We're going to play a Great Hall of Starnheim to open the game. And it looks like we may be having a little bit of trouble this match. But we're going to go ahead and foretell this card. You just click over there on the right hand side and then it exiles it. Which means next turn we will have a guaranteed creature. I like to get Heliod on the field early. So we may just go ahead and play him now. And what that'll do is allow us to apply pressure once we do get another mana on the field for the Vengeful Reaper. Because it pretty much guarantees we're gaining life off of attacking with the Vengeful Reaper. Alrighty. Well, we didn't get the mana we needed. So we're going... Well, actually, I'm going to hold on to those. Because I've got both of them in hand. I'm going to play Raydane. And I'm going to end my turn. 
Now, why I didn't try to play the Hagra Mauling is specifically because I don't know what this guy's got, and I'm going to have to counter any creatures he throws at me. So I'm hoping to get some mana next turn to actually be able to play something fun, because then I can play my Vengeful Reaper and potentially tap my Heliod, or my, give my Heliod its effect, and make the Vengeful Reaper have... Um, ooh... I think I want to do this instead. Now, they're probably going to burn it. But they're not going to have a fun time with it if they do. I'm going to go ahead and play this because we're not drawing any mana. And we're going to go ahead and swing for two. There's no repercussion because they don't have anything to block with anyway. And our creature stays untapped because of Vigilance. So now we get to wait and see what he's got in store for us. I can only assume that it's a he because it says Dada for the name. But I think that's a pretty good reason if you don't, you know, know somebody personally to believe that it's a male. We're going to go ahead and keep Tegrid up there, or Turgrid. And now we're going to give... I don't think it matters. We're going to give Ray Dane um, lifelink. And then we're going to swing with everything we've got because they have no blockers. And we're just going to pump the living crap out of this Valkyrie, that way, in the event that they actually try to kill it with any burn spells, they won't be able to because of the toughness being so high. I'm assuming their deck has more than red in it, and they just can't cast because they need the other color of mana. Or not. There's a possibility it's just a red deck, and they don't know what to do. We're going to play Turgrid. We played Turgrid's Lantern on accident. So we're going to go ahead and tap it to make them either discard a card or lose three life. They chose to lose three life, which is fantastic for us. Because I made a huge mistake. I wanted to play Turgrid as a creature. But since we played it as that, we're going to make a best or the best case out of our situation here. A Maskwood Nexus. That looks interesting. It's going to create two two shape shifting tokens with Changeling, which makes them all creature types. Yes. Okay. So the reason that I'm excited that we drew a mana is because now we can actually play this at full force to throw out a, an extra creature. And we can almost win the game here. So we're going to force them to either take the three damage, discard a card, or sacrifice their only creature. Now, this turn is basically the game ender in the first place because they don't have any blockers so we're just going to swing and it guarantees our win now since that game was really really easy we're going to try again against somebody who's potentially going to be a little better than that because I honestly expected them to burn my creatures early I expected them to just beat the living snot out of us, to be honest, because I'm used to red going really fast. Alright. This is a good mana base, and we've got two Righteous Valkyries in hand. This is a Keeper, if I ever saw one. 
We're going to keep it and toss down a Temple of Silence for our first opening mana. You see, this is the type of deck I was talking about. Ooh, white mana. That can stay. So what we're going to do next turn is play a Swamp and then play our Youthful Valkyrie. And after that, we're going to start playing our Righteous Valkyries. That hurt a little bit. Now, as long as they do not burn that Youthful Valkyrie into the ground, we're good. Because we refuse to block with the Valkyrie against their Fervent Champion because their Fervent Champion has First Strike. Now what first strike means is that if it attacks and they have enough power to overpower our toughness, it guarantees that our creature dies first. Because we do not have first strike, we only have flying. So we're going to play speedy a little bit here. And we're not going to attack, we're just going to build up an army. Because at this point, we know if we if we attack, we have no blockers. Right now, they have to wait on us to do something stupid to attack us. That guy's going to hurt. So I'm going to get rid of it. Because I don't like it. Um, hmm. It'll enter tapped. We're going to destroy him. No attacks. Now, I know it seems a little bit boring that we're not attacking, but if we attack right now, we're taking at least 7 damage. But as it stands, if they swing with everything, we're going to make out with a, or like a bandit. Unless they burn something. Oof. Oh, he can't block. Okay. So what we're going to do is go ahead and block... Wait, no. We want to block the Fervent Champions. That way he can't feed that Rimrock Knight anymore. Because the Rimrock is going to hurt us a lot. Ouch. So we wanted a game in which we were going to possibly lose, and we found it. Um, he has Double Strike and Trample. No attacks. So we are losing one of our creatures this turn, that is guaranteed. We are getting our butt stomped next turn, if they don't attack this turn. So what we're going to do is produce blockers and gain a little bit of life. He's going to equip that Ember Cleave probably to the Bolt Hound and see if he can swing through our defenses. If he does that, we're taking two damage. So we're not going to die, but it's not going to feel very good either. Do you have a burn spell, fella? Now our Righteous Valkyries that we have in hand, because we have two of them, are going to bring us back from this game if we survive. And this is why. Now we can swing freely because they have nothing to block with.
And I do believe that's game. Yep, because we get another swing because we have double strike. And that's how you do it. So I believe that's going to be it for the night. But thank you for watching our videos. Um, if you liked this, make sure to like the video. Make sure to click the subscribe button. And make sure to definitely click that little bell. That way you can actually get notified whenever we put out new videos. I'm going to try and start doing more videos over Magic the Gathering based things and other nerdy stuff. I just really appreciate the ability to be on a platform like this and be able to reach out to people like you. You guys have a wonderful night. Take care, be safe, have fun, and I'll catch you next time, Planeswalker.